253. Got a brand new wall pump. Um, made in made in Taiwan. I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> don't, don't make anything decent in Australia anymore. Uh, made in Taiwan oil pump. You can see I've already um, applied the, the silicon, uh, the RTV or whatever you want to call it, the what's it got written on here? Ultra grey to this face. Um, apply the gasket. This is one of those faces that I bust over taping up before and you can see the actual gasket face fits perfect around the, the ceiling face there. Um, so that's that. We'll I'll find the oil pump and we'll apply a bit of grease to that internally and then we will um, get it set up. Right, what I'm doing here is I'm priming the oil pump with a grease gun. Um, I just this thing. Uh, I don't pull them apart. If you pull them apart, you avoid the warranty on the actual pumps. So, um, so I just stick the grease hose in the end. I take the grease nipple off the end of it, and then I just I get some air out of this thing because I just I just put a new cartridge in it, so it should be should be pumping. Obviously, it's not doing that right, right now. That's just free spinning there. And just feel it taking a bit of pressure. You can hear it popping grease at the end there. There you go, it's starting to get pressure now. So I just grease it. What it's doing there now is it's just pumping grease into the... You can see it's starting to come out the end here. I just want to come over it there until I get it to come out another location. Which is generally around where the filter comes out of. You can see it coming at the back here, so that's heaps, heaps of grease inside there right now. All right. That's probably about 20 or 30 pumps of grease into that. Yeah, so my recommendation is don't, don't pull the pump apart like people will tell you to do, because if it's got any... like Vaseline tends to gum up your um, your oil filter so just be wary doing that at least if you're using grease like a good brand grease I'll, um, I'll show you what I've used in a second um, this is this is the grease I've used here it's um, it's an SKF bearing grease um, LGEP 2 slash 0 0.4 high load extreme pressure grease. It's a really light, lightweight grease. It's really good for this sort of situation. I'm just going to clean this mounting face here so when I put some gasket material on it, or the gasket glue, it, um, it has somewhere clean to adhere to. Let me just flip this camera back around over to here. There we go. So right now, I just apply a bit of this grey RTV or grey gasket silicon to the faces. Just a light smear. It's a really good, it's a really good fit and finish around these. It's a machine face. I'll just smear that around 
you put too much on, you'll never get the bloody thing off again if you have to change the pump in service. And if you put too much on, it will just pour out the sides anyway. So, yeah, so there we go. That's it. Smear it on there. And then, obviously, it faces the front. This bit, this shaft goes in and it engages with the oil pump drive inside the engine. Fortunate for me, it lined up first go. A bit of, bit of lube on the, on the bolt end, just so I know I get the right torque when I torque it up. And that torque, I think, is like, they say like 26 to 30 foot pounds. I'll just screw these in for now. Clean my hands and get a Get a torque wrench. Give me two seconds. Right, so I've used the Auto Pro um, digital torque wrench here again. So I've got it set, you see, at 30, um, 30 foot pounds. So if I just screw this up, just lifting it up for now, nip all four of them up. Just so you get a even contact face. All right, then we'll go to 30 foot pounds. We'll just nip them up with this first, just to get it to squeeze out the excess silicon and stuff. All right, we're getting closer now, so it's starting beeping and let's go. S30 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 is one of the first one didn't make the sound so we'll just double check it There we go They're all set so that's the Oil pump on, and like I normally do before, before that glue sets, I just wipe it around the side here, just make sure there's none on the paint, none on the pump. Get a nice clean surface down there. You don't have to do this if you want to be a bodgy brother and do whatever you like, but uh, this is just my way. I like looking under an engine and seeing clean parts a bit squeeze in here I've got to try and get out there we go and the top here make sure it's not all smeared on the front of the engine there make sure it's not visible on the top here either Yeah, all we can see now is the tiniest bit of grey RTV and gasket. That's all you should see. There we go, look at that, beautiful. Perfection. I've um Make sure I go and get an oil filter on that soon because I reckon if I can get the if I can get the um, if I can get the manifold cleaned up in the next couple of days, what I plan to do. I won't, let me get that back around where it should be. I will get the um this thing started in, I reckon, in under a week. Not in the car, obviously, I'll just start it in its stand. But, um, yeah, it's really getting there now. Also, I'm going to put the 
oil pressure sander on because I've got it at this point in time. I'll just clean up the old silicon from it. All right, let's um, put this down here. So I have the tiniest bit of RTV, probably covering the first maybe three, three threads, four threads, as you can see here. Where is it? There you go. That way when I screw it on, it'll sit in a hole. And anything excess after that will be able to get wiped off. Let's grab a spanner. And we'll be able to tighten this thing up. Not sure what size it is. It's definitely that big. There you go, it's three quarter inch. So we're going to tighten this baby up, not fully, we'll just give it a bit until we get this fitting back around the top up here. Obviously enough to seal it. Right, that's getting pretty tight now. There we go. Wipe off the excess sealant. If you put um, Teflon on here, that's perfectly fine, but you'll see, you'll see the Teflon that you didn't use around the around the edge of the thread and again I don't like that look I'd rather be nice clean thread nice clean pump there you go that's oil pump on new oil pump new oil sender um, I don't have too many other parts to actually assemble at the moment I'm waiting for that waiting to get the timing cover um, blasted um, hydro blasted which will be like a, a blend of sand mixed in with the um, mixed in with the water blasting process and it'll bring it up nice and glossy and I'll do the same with the mouth once I get it fixed as well so okay I had a bit of a problem with um, memory storage on my phone um, which is what I do the filming with. Um, lost a little bit of the talking sequence there, but um, again, just so you can see, hopefully it came out in the other video, in case you haven't got a, a manual. You can see these numbers here. Um, one, two, um, th three, four, five, six. If you follow that sequence there to do your manifold and talk it up to First pass, 34 newton meters. Second pass, 41 newton meters. Go back over, check all the bolts. Always use new, use new bolts. The old ones that come out are generally fairly rusty in the neck and they could snap. So um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the new harmonic balancer on. It's a power band um, harmonic balancer. Not sure if you've ever taken one off before, but if you take one off, you'll notice that um, you, always get, you always get oil behind the um, you get oil behind the, the washer on the on the bolt, and that's because it has a seal on the outside here, which seals in this face, but nothing seals the um, the back face there. So this is something I do. Not everyone does it, but um, this is just preventing potential oil leaks down the track. And that's starting to go up already. That shit. So I just put a little bit of. RTV, whatever colour you want to use, just because it gets torqued up against the, um, it gets torqued up and pushed in all the way up against the shoulder of the timing gear in there. You really want to seal between that face. So um, also make sure you put some oil, not too much, on that seal running face. You don't want to run that dry when you first start up. I've already, I've already turned this motor over by hand with the bolt in the hole, and I have the keyway facing pretty much close to top dead center. So I know that when I install this this balancer, I need to, I need to put the keyway up towards top dead center. It's almost that direction now. I've got the bolt, new bolt here. Um, I just put a little bit of oil on the bolt threads, so when I tighten it up, it's um, it's not going to gall up the thread. 
and if you ever have to remove it again it'll come out and a tiny bit of it just underneath the head of the um, underneath the, the washer put the new bolt in there I haven't um, the impact driver here and the drive it in torque wrench on it and make sure it's the torque so I can see now that's just moved that balancer just slightly past top dead center it's probably 10 millimeters past so I'll be able to turn it over by hand with a torque wrench I'll just find that torque setting and I'll let you know what it is all right so balancer I've got the balancer shock at the top I just brought it around I've got the back of the gearbox the back of the engine shock this is 140 foot pounds so it's got a fair bit of wuss in it <coughs> There you go. That's a fairly tight bolt there. Probably the <laughs> tightest one you'll do on the engine. 140 foot pounds. Um, make sure you get that nice and tight. Make sure it's well lubed so when you tighten it up, it doesn't gall up on the thread. So we have the balancer on now. And I'll um I'll take the chock out of the back of the engine here. I've got to get it back around the other way a bit first. Hang on, I'll just I'll move this torque wrench opposite direction so I can get it out. Right, I had a ring spanner shoved in the back there. Now this, I need to bring it around top dead center. Right, that is gone past it. I'll, I'll back up the full press now. So. grab me dizzy and we'll um, reposition the camera and we'll install the distributor right uh, with um, I showed you that the balancer is at top dead center um, get your distributor the vacuum advance you need to make sure you get in the right position so it really doesn't matter where you drop this into position actually it doesn't matter that you put the gasket in there um, there is a Quite a fine little paper gasket that goes in and fits down inside that hole there before you put your dizzy in there. Um, I'm just going to check the manual of the position that actually it might be better with that up under the distributor here so it's in position to start with. It goes up under there. I might just check the position that the distributor actually goes in, which side the which side the um, vacuum advance goes on, whether it's that side or this side. I want to get it right to start with. And also I need to match up with my leads. So I'll, I'll double check that. Right, so the vacuum advance goes over this side where this gap is here because the ignition lead here has to go to your coil and your coil is positioned here. If I put it over there, it's never going to reach it. So. Drop it in, actually don't drop it in. Just get a bit of um get a bit of engine assembly lube first and put the engine assembly lube on the gear. It's a new cam remember so you really don't want to stuff that gear up as you um actually just make sure it's in nice and smooth or it'll get on your on your face where your where your gasket is gonna run. Get that shit off your hands. Right, so drop it in vertically. Go straight down. When it goes in there, you just need to turn it a bit till till it sits down there, right? So you really want this to be sort of somewhere around this position so you can turn that advance around that area there. Um, I'm waiting for my new bracket to turn up that holds my dizzy down. So I'm just using an old, um, I think it's like a um, exhaust manifold clamp from an old old Holden six cylinder or something. Just put the bolt on the top. Just sit it in there for now. I'm just trying to hold it in there so it clamps it. So when I turn the engine upside down um, to do the, the sump bolts that you don't actually drop your distributor out. 
All right, so that's just sitting there nice and snug. I'll just nip it up a little bit. Hopefully that's hard to pinch. And it's not. I'll just grab a spanner. It's hard to get down to the back of that bolt. Okay, hopefully you can see the bolt that I'm talking about. It's down here at the back of the engine. I'm just going to nip it up for now so the dizzy doesn't turn in any way, shape or form. Um, and I'm just going to leave it like that for now because I don't want it to move. I'm going to flip the engine upside down and we're going to replace those sump bolts. Let's flip it over. Hopefully I've remembered everything and nothing falls out. <laughs> Let's get it upside down here. I didn't want to turn it upside down um, primarily because I didn't want oil to pour out where the manifold usually sits. So right now we're going to get rid of these old shitty bolts around here and put the new ones in, which I have somewhere. I'm going to take the whole sump off first, clean things up, make sure there's no oil on the, on the gasket. I just put some washers on here before just to keep it from damaging all the paint. I'm getting rid of all these ones with a half inch head first. Should be um, more of these. Two at the front. Main seal to the back. And then I'll have um, these smaller ones to go. See, I've got a ratchet in my hand. That's those two bigger, or four bigger ones out. Let's get these um, smaller ones out now. Just check that it's still recording because we kept having memory issues, but I just transferred a load of videos over to the memory card, so we should be good now. I guess at this angle, you kind of see what I was talking about by putting the wash plugs in last after you paint it I, i'm probably sick of hearing me saying that i love seeing nice fresh gaskets no paint on them i love seeing the world plugs there nice and clean no paint on them all right let's um take the sump off again right all gaskets off all cleaned up so again anywhere there's um orange paint i'll use the um red or orange um, RTV here. I don't use a lot of it. I just use enough to sit the gasket down and hold it in place while it's, um, while it's setting the gasket. And just get it along here. You don't want, you don't want it pouring out everywhere. Just a bit more in the back of here. Get to that point there with it simply because it hits aluminium after that point. Same on this side over here. Start at that same point in the aluminium transitions. Just a thin smear of it. I'll wipe it around my finger and sit. Only, again, the only reason I do it is sometimes the gasket slides a bit or moves as you're tightening it. And you really need to get a good seal here. This is where all your oils contained in your, in your sump. All right, give it a bit of a, of a smooth around. I 
he's going to try to dive it hanging inside the end and get rid of it. Same on this side. Again, smooth it over. And then this is where we put the, the cork gasket down on top of it. Um, but first we put the um, the seals over the front and back of the um, timing cover and over the back of the engine there. So I use grey at the front here where the timing cover seal goes down. A bit grey on there. It's a bit blocked up at the moment. I'm blocked up with a screwdriver. Get the get the hard piece out. You don't want that stuck in your seal somewhere. A bit grey on there. Squeeze it plenty in the corners. Get a good bead of it through the top here. Else. I'll put a bit more of the red over the back here around this seal face. Squeeze it in that bottom corner there. Get a decent bead of it through the top. Just make sure that's in the groove because you really want that. Um, that rubber that's going to sit in there to seal really well. That's what I'm talking about, the two rubber seals here. All right. One's a low one, one's a high one. So the low one goes to the back here. And this low one has these little, has these little, where are they? So these little notches in them here. Those little notches there sit down in the side of your cap. So your bearing cap here, and we'll push that down into that that silicon there. Get the rubber part of the seal sitting down. Well, just break off any shit that's hanging up the side there. Don't really want to see any of that later. All right, clean your hands again. You know what it is. Red on the area that's going to have the grey RTV on it. Like I just got the seal here. Right. Push the front one down the same way. The front one doesn't have like a little, doesn't have a little tab like the, like the back one did. All right, so now these seals they have, you can probably see on this one here, have this little lines of this little serrated section there and that's what this cork gasket sits on so the cork gasket comes joined like together as one piece i'm guessing that's to save um save it getting damaged it's got these little tabs that are still attached just pop them apart once you get them apart they only fit on one way so the front's quite a shallow quite a shallow bend which is this side here the back's quite a wide by bend I mean this sort of last turn here so between that serrated edge there and the cork you need to put a bit of bit of silicon there to take up the gap keep saying silicon but um it's not like the crap you use in your bathroom or fix the gutter on your house with it's proper High temp engine RTV or silicon. Put it on those. And again, you just got to get ready to wipe it off. So, again, when I talked about this one has a low radius, this is a sharp turn here. The um, sharp turn goes to the back of the engine. You line up all your sump bolt holes, give a bit of a squeeze down where the 
Our TV joins the the sump. Go to the other side and do the same. And the TV joins the gas going. The sharp turn goes to the back. Uh, that goes to the front there. Line up all the holes. Make sure you've got all the holes knocked out. This one still has one of the cork cork bungs in the hole. You'll really struggle to get your bolt in if that thing's still in place there. Give it a bit of a squeeze where the silicon is at these, where they join. Make sure they're joined well there. Now we're going to put another film of silicon over the whole lot again. And that'll be us. So, at the front here we'll just put not excessive amounts because the sump cork gasket will take up the difference. You really don't want to get that crap squeezed out everywhere. You just need a nice clean film of it just so it sticks to the sump. And last thing you want is, um, is oil pouring out because you tied arsed it out and didn't put enough silicon on there or RTV on there. Put a bit around that back bolt hole. Put some, put a good blob of it in the corner where the radius of the sump goes over this seal. And then a bead of it over the top. Remembering this seal's still sitting high because it's not squeezed all the way down. Put a blob of it in that corner there. Blob of it where the where the two seals meet. You can see how much of this. There's not a lot left, but that's pretty much how much it takes. One full tube of it really to do. Do the engine. The other thing we'll do now is make sure that the sump is nice and clean. Put a bit of a blob around that same point there. Now, I'm going to put a bit of grey around the front bit here, where the aluminium touches. Get this, all this red shit off my hands. Whatever comes off anyway. I'm going to put the grey in the front here where it goes over, over the top of this. Seal here, bit of a blob in the corner. Right there. Mm, all right. Give that bit of a give that sump a bit of a clean here. Where's me? Right here. I'm not going to move the camera to show you this. I'm just all I'm doing here is cleaning the oil off the ceiling faces on the sump. It's quite a bit there actually. But then clean this off. This sump would never seal, and um, I'd have oil leaks. I either think it was the front or rear seal, but um, it wouldn't be the Sump gasket leaking. One last clean just to make sure it's all done. So it's done three times. All right. Now wipe off any extra oil that's in the inside the sump because if that runs down as you're fitting it or screwing it up, it's just going to get in the sides anyway. It's just a bit of a trap. All right. Pick up the sump. Spray on top. Line up all the holes. Find your new bolts, which I put. Where did I put them? Right here. And these new bolts are just an exact 
um, exact replica of of the old one. So we'll put these bolts in the holes. And I'll ratchet and screw these things down. Don't tighten them up yet, just screw them down loose. Whichever one you get out, put it in at that time. The bigger ones at the front here. Yeah, the small ones go in the small holes. When you put it in the hole, you just sort of give the you just give the sump a bit of a jiggle around. Like you put it in the hole there. Move the bolt around a bit till you feel it just start to take. And you just screw it up. Sometimes you just gotta jiggle it a bit just to get the gasket to move slightly. Like that one. I'm intending on putting all new bolts for this whole engine. Um, just like that look. Not sure exactly how they come from factory, probably all painted in and covered up, but uh, I'm guessing if, if that's the case and someone says, hey, all those bolts should be painted and not um, exposed like they are, I'll just, I'll just pull the engine again and paint the bladder in. Alright, we're getting there. Here's the last the big one at the back of our end. Let's go around this side, I want to block the view. Not as much to see. I've got a lot of grubby handprints on this engine now. I'll have to give it a wipe down before I actually put it in the car. Once I take it off this this um, engine stand, engine build stand, I'll, um, I'm going to put it in this engine cradle just so it sits there out of the way ready for when I need to use it to assemble it. Last three bolts then I'll tighten them all off. Again you just got to make sure you get them all in first. until they touch. I'm not tightening this thing down yet. I'm just spinning them all down until all the bolts touch the sump mounting face. There is a torque specification for these bolts. I'll um, find that in a second. Actually, I'll just get the screwdriver attachment thing, but this must make it a lot easier to screw up than using that bloody thing. Here we go. Yeah, much easier. Difficult ones over here, I'll just 
Put them down as well. Yep, that's it. Spin these ones down that are in the over the ceiling places. And then I'll um show you how we torque these sump bolts down. Right, let me just find the torque setting for those sump bolts. Right. Um, some bolts go to 10 newton meters, so it's 8 to 10 newton meters, but um, you've got to, I always sort of air on the right side. Center. That's good. I like to tighten from the middle out. And then I'll have to go over them all again. Bit of a crisscross pattern again like we did before. Too critical right now because um, the the whole pan has to be retorqued down anyway. down on top of that seal at the front there. You can see plenty of silicon spewing out the sides, which is good. Let's go through this hole. Just let's just because of the cork gasket, we might have to go through these a few times just to make sure it's all pulled down evenly. Because every time you tighten one, the one beside it becomes loose. Which is why some guys don't like building their motor and using a torque wrench on these smaller bolts. They like just Going by feel. No, if you've got a torque wrench, why not use it? Again, this is just a small um, Tool Pro torque wrench, super cheap autos. Um, it's got inch pounds and newton meters on it. Um, so you just got to be careful you don't fall into that trap of thinking something you've done in foot pounds. But it's inch pounds because you can forget pretty easily. So you can see every time I do it, it's moving a little bit less. But if you don't go back and check these, that cork gasket doesn't get squashed down enough, and the front and back seal doesn't get squashed enough, and then you end up with a with a leak. And if you over tighten it, the cork gasket just gets squeezed out the side too far. And it splits 
I'm going to split the other leg. Looks like they're all zipped up pretty well now. They're all clicking off straight away at 10 newton meters. Again, the torque setting in 8 to 10 newton meters. Double check the larger ones again. The front and back seals. How much this back one let off? I might just go back through again and just double check the small ones now. Just to be sure because now the bigger ones are done up. Could have pulled down a touch more. Looks like it hasn't. some of them move I just go back and recheck them all again because they're actually just pulling the seal down a bit more each time. Check the big ones again. Just a touch. Alright that looks like it's looks like it's got it now. Now I'll just go along. And I wipe off all the excess sealant. Not a lot of it squeezed out here, a couple of little bits of it here and there. But I go through, clean it off, so it's all nice and tidy. That's the process of um, installing your sump. Right, I put the um, water neck or the thermostat housing cover. Just gonna put that onto the engine here now. So I put it there. Have a shitload of it, but a nice thin film around the side. On the side of the housing here, where the water neck goes on, there's actually a oh, like a heater point just here on the side of it as well. So it's got a little bit of sealant around near the Turn the bolt and the heat of it. Alright. Find the gasket which I've got up here. Just need a bit more just there. Still missing there. Oops. Find the gasket. Which is here. Stick it down on the top there. Make sure it lines up with all the holes. Clear the silicon from around that coolant hole there. Do the same again, have a thin smear, don't overdo it, you have to wipe all this excess off anyway, so um, just be cautious how much you put on. You'll see, I can put a shitload on here, but this will still squeeze out everywhere as I tighten it. So this, um, this thermostat housing, or water neck, or whatever people call them, eight to ten newton meters as well um, and i'm not sure if they go into a water jacket so i'm just going to put a bit of sealant on the on the bolts bolt threads i don't think they do but with this age manifold um, you just don't know if there's some porosity or anything in there all right keep your hands clean Not the bolt holes first, drop it down, smear them up. These are a UNC thread in here. Make 
shouldn't be too hard to to nip up. Hopefully these go all the way down. I think they're the right bolts for for this. Try and get it even if you can. Don't want to pull one side down before the other. You really want one side to sort of stop and then you nip the other side up a bit. Then you're back the other side. Um, so eight to ten newton meters as well. That's inch pounds. Still on. Still on ten newton meters. So I'll just sort of half nip to either, to either side. You can hear that's not. That really isn't a lot of. A lot of torque there. You're going into aluminium here, right? So just be very wary of what you're screwing into. And then make sure you clean off all the excess. This is the gasket hanging out the side. Clean it off the gasket so you can see it. So it doesn't look like Bodgy Brothers put the engine together. A bit of silicon on the side of the aluminium, it will actually change the colour of the alloy, so try and clean it off as well as best you can. Uh, that looks pretty good on that side. Let's just get her off the back here. Pretty tidy there. Now I just use a little, a little bit of brake cleaner, Oops, just to clean the gasket, so you can see the black of the gasket. Yeah, no, I keep saying it, but that's just me, right? Um, I think you can see it without the drill and crap around it. So much better off. Um, you'll notice that I'm taping up all these all these water ports here, um, mainly because it could be a while before I start this engine, so I don't want any of those little mud wasps. <laughs> Building their nest in any of these holes here. Um, one of these water pump outlets is blocked off with a plug that comes in the kit. And then the other one here is the one that comes from from here to your heater, from your heater back to here. The other one comes around from from here to there. So um, quite a few hoses on the top of these engines. All right, where are we at? We are almost finished for the night. Um, I've still got to sort out my carburetor rebuild, I've still got to sort out my starter motor and um, alternator rebuild. Um, I'm just going to check out, make sure there's no more holes open. Yes, there is on the fuel pump. There's two down there, but yeah, that'll do me for the night. So, like I normally say, if you um, like what I'm doing here, Hit the hit the like button. Um, don't forget to tell your mates and friends about Sully's Rods and Customs. Just a one guy just doing what I do at home, building cars, building engines, assembling them. I tend not to keep them too long. <laughs> Hopefully, I keep this two door coupe for a while. Um, yeah, again, I just I just like turning the camera on and filming what I do. So um, if you like what I'm doing, keep watching. Um, yeah, right.